So let me reintroduce uh, Jasmine Singer. Um, they have a daily blog and a weekly podcast highlighting resources you can use to find your way to change the world for animals. And the big thing is they were named the 2011 Veg News Magazine Indie Powerhouse of the Year. So that's pretty big news. So this is Jasmine. And now I shall introduce Kathy Preston. Kathy Preston, right here is the author and best-selling uh, author of Quantum Wellness, The Veganist, and her newly released book, The Lean, a revolutionary and simple 30-day plan for healthy, lasting weight loss. She's presented her views of leaning into, quote-unquote, veganism on shows like Martha Stewart, Dr. Oz, Ellen, and Oprah. Met Oprah. <laughs> Singer Rory House will be interviewing Kathy during this presentation. And afterwards, Kathy will be doing a book signing immediately following this presentation at the Veg Worcester table, which is at the entrance on the same level when you go back around the corner. So without further ado, let's have a warm welcome to both Jasmine and Kathy. Hi, Jasmine. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm a little intimidated since the last person you were sitting across from was either Ellen or Oprah. Okay. And I don't know if I could fill those shoes, but I'm going to try my darndest. I'm so excited to hear about the lean. You did such a tremendous job with veganists, and it just seems like you never stop. You just keep going, and I know that your books have been so inspiring to me and to so many people out here. So tell us about the lean. What do you mean when you say the lean? And do I have to lean in when I say that? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, first of all. That was really nice. I appreciate that. Um, the lean is a, is a play on words. It means that it's about getting lean in the body, and it's all about leaning into it. Because I am a big fan of doing things easily. Um, I don't like hardcore discipline. I don't like those, you know, white knuckle rules that make you crazy and crave food. And it's too hard. I think it's it's just too unpleasant. Uh, for myself, any big change I've ever made that has stuck and been sustainable has been a gradual lifestyle shift. And the lean reflects that. It's all about losing weight, but doing it easily, in a practical way, and in a way that you can keep doing it forward, lifelong. I love that. I love that you approach this in such an accessible way. I think that that is something that's so important to so many people here today who are vegan, vegetarian, veg-curious, veg-skeptical, whatever. It's so important for us to be able to take what can sometimes seem like a big concept and make it something that we can actually easily acquire and, and, and behavior that we can easily put into our lives. I know that when Marianne and I talked today at noon, we talked about transition foods. This is something that you have so eloquently said, and I would love for our audience and myself to hear more about what you mean by transition foods and what they might entail. Yeah. You know, interestingly, um, from the veg community, I get a lot of pushback on this. And um, people often say, why are you a big fan of fake meats, you know, like veggie sausage or a veggie burger, things like that. And I'm, I am a big fan of this stuff because um, for the vast majority of people who are eating pizza, pepperoni pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken and, um, you know, burgers from McDonald's or whatever, it's just not going to happen that they're going to go straight to whole foods. It's not going to happen. It didn't happen for me. I um, grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was raised on chicken fried steak and barbecued ribs and burgers on Saturday night and every kind of you know cheese and, and fry and everything. So when I woke up to this stuff and I decided I wanted to be a healthy person and I wanted to be someone who didn't eat animals, it was like, uh, okay, so what do I do? And it was so overwhelming for me. And the idea of eating a bowl of rice and beans and vegetables was just, 
it, it just wasn't going to happen. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, my taste buds weren't there yet. My sensibilities weren't there. Um, so when you know, when I think about food, I think about tradition. I'm a very all-American gal. I like a hearty meal. My family uh, is really important to me. I want to enjoy tradition with my family, with my friends, with my community. Um, and, and these transitional foods like, you know, uh, garden chicken or field roast sausage or things like that are fantastic because they look and, and taste like the things we grew up loving. So, for instance, when I started leaning into it and I told my husband, I said, okay, we're not going to have any more steak in the house. And he was like, okay, fine, you know, I know red meat's bad for me, you know. And then a few months later, I, I came back and I said, you know what, I, I just can't do, I can't have chicken anymore. We can't do this. And he was like, oh my God, this will have lost our mind. <laughs> and, uh, you know, since I'm in charge of the, uh, the kitchen, uh, he was not happy that he wasn't going to be getting chicken, but he was fine if he was having something like a garden chicken or something like that. So people like my husband, who may not be on the same track as me, and his kids who are not on the same track as me, they're okay if they can have chicken, mashed potatoes, and broccoli, because it's the traditional meal that they had on Wednesday night or something like that. And as the mind opens, and as the heart opens, it continues to open. It's a process, you know? It's a spectrum. And I'm all for just making that little step. And it may not be perfect. And certainly it's much better to have whole grains, beans, lentils, black beans, chickpeas, veggies, and fruits, and all of that. There's a whole spectrum. I continue to lean, you know what I mean? I, I should eat more salad than I do, but I'm getting there. I'm just, I'm just leaning into it. And if, if, if I can please my family and open them up to the idea that food can taste good without animals, I'm successful. I'm happy. The same with my community. And the more they learn about the health benefits, the more they're going to move away from those transitional foods and toward more wholesome, plant-based, um, just really from the ground and from the trees food. I love that. It's, so you're basically saying that if you're coming from the standard American diet or a sad diet to a right to a diet that is comprised of some of these transition foods, it's not like you're trading in one unhealthy habit for another because you're still even with these transition foods consuming much healthier food than the sad diet. Yeah, well, no animals are harmed, right? right? There's far less uh, impact on the environment because livestock is so damaging to the environment. There's zero cholesterol in these foods, and there's a lot less fat and saturated fat. So you're way ahead of the game. And to me, in terms of not eating animals, I'm, ha I'm happy. Yeah. You know, that, that's a really big thing. And by the way, perfection is the enemy of the good. You know, why do we have to be perfect? I, I, again, I'm all about leaning forward because I think it's the human impulse to move forward. I think there's something in us that has the evolutionary impulse to get better, to be better, to grow, to evolve. But it doesn't have to happen, and it doesn't happen in nature overnight. We evolve, you know, in fits and starts. We, we sort of, you know, see what works and, and we keep getting better. So progress, not perfection. Progress, not perfection, and I didn't even have to pay a therapist to tell me that. That's great. So, so Kathy, I have a question for you. When I look at you, I think, this is a beautiful woman. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. If people start to embrace what you're talking about in the lean, can we look like you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what kinds of health benefits and maybe conscience benefits might people start to be able to see by embracing a more yeah. plant-based diet? Well, you lose weight right away. That's a natural um, result of eating this way. And there's a few reasons because, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but just to recap it really quickly, uh, meat, dairy, they're concentrated sources of fat and calories. You know, in nature, we as, you know, Primal human beings would seek after very concentrated sources of 
calories because you know we didn't know when the next hit was coming. So we're naturally attracted to fat and sugar. And so meat, uh, meat is a very concentrated source of stuff that's going to make us gain weight, which back in the day it didn't because we didn't know when it was coming. But um, so it's it's not good in terms of um, watching our weight. And next is that meat and dairy and eggs and all that stuff have no fiber. So fiber is the one dietary component that across the board in all the science has been the most effective at helping people lose weight and keep it off. And the reasons for that is that fiber fills your belly and it makes the food uh, turn into glucose, turn into sugar very slowly and stably. So your blood glucose, your, your blood sugar stays nice and steady and that means that you're not going to kick into these wild cravings. Your hunger hormones are going to be kept at bay, basically. And the third reason is that uh, plant-based food has a very high thermic effect. The, the thermic effect means your body heat uh, during digestion, which is produced. So when you eat a vegan meal for three hours afterwards, your metabolism is actually burning 16% faster. Wow. Yeah, so doing nothing else, not adding in exercise, not <laughs> calorie restricting, nothing, your metabolism is kicked into gear by eating this way. So it's an amazing thing because it, it makes so much sense when you move toward plant-based foods and away from animal foods. You lose weight, you get to the place that you're supposed to, um, and it's also good for your health. When I started eating this way, um, I did it for ethical reasons because I, <clears throat> I was playing with my dog one day and she was so cute and I was rubbing her belly and I was just like, oh my God, I love animals so much, they're so amazing. And this little voice inside me then said, why the hell are you eating them? And it was like, oh my God, okay. So I started leaning in that direction, but I thought, all right, I don't want to eat animals, but obviously I'm going to get fat because we all know you need a high protein, low fat, uh, low carb diet, which I quickly learned was not the case. And I also learned, which a lot of you were here for T. Colin Campbell's talk, is that you know eating plant-based food um, not only prevents but it reverses a lot of the chronic illnesses in our um, culture. So uh, I personally, I did lose weight. I felt a lot more energy really quickly. I spring out of bed in the morning. I haven't had so much as a cold in, I think, eight years. Um, and I know for my body, I'm preventing cancer to a large degree and I'm preventing heart disease and type 2 diabetes and all of that stuff. So that to me is very exciting, you know. It's what's good on one level, you know, vanity, you want to, you know, be slim is and have good skin and all that stuff is also good on the other levels long term in that we don't get sick. Absolutely. I like I like how you came to all of this from an ethical perspective originally, and then you really made yourself just thrive as a result of it. I think that's something so many people want, and one thing that I've gotten from reading your writing and following you is that you really can live a life that's in an ethical continuum with your beliefs, and that also makes you feel lighter. So yeah. it's, it's interesting because um, there are very few places that you can express your values so clearly as what you eat, you know? Because we eat three times a day, you know, at least. <laughs> and um, that, so that's a lot. So it gives me an opportunity three times a day to say, what am I all about? You know, what, what's important to me? What are my values? And for me, kindness is important, mercy is important. Um, you know, good stewardship over, you know, the animals and the earth, that's important to me. So it's a way to express my values. Absolutely. I love the way you put that. So let's get practical for a moment. There's a lot of people here who are vegan, who are vegetarian, who are veg curious, as we mentioned. How can anybody in this room have some specific steps they can take to become a little healthier? Is a little healthier. Okay, well, I think um, the first thing that I would say that is super easy and you, you get great results is to switch out your milk for non-dairy milk. Um, I grew up love milk, loving milk because, you know, I, I believe everything should be creamy and smooth and milky. It's just, it makes everything delicious. And when you switch out to non-dairy milk, you get a result right away because if you think about it, um, the, the milk
milk from a dairy cow is perfectly designed by nature to make a little tiny calf put on a thousand pounds really quickly. And that calf is meant to be fat, docile, and slow. And we don't want to be fat, docile, and slow. We want to be lean and mean and quick on our feet. We want to be sharp. We want to be quick, you know? So it doesn't make sense that we would drink what nature intended to make that cow. So when you uh, drink non-dairy milk, you're avoiding all the inherent hormones. And I'm not even saying added hormones that, that cows get to produce more dairy. I'm just talking about natural inherent hormones that is in a lactating mother to produce growth in her baby. You know, Even humans, we don't drink the milk of our mothers past, you know, I don't know if there's late LA people here, you know, two and three years, you know, whatever, four years, um, usually maybe a year, um, because we just don't need it anymore. We don't want that kind of rapid growth, you know, and it, 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 it's just unnatural. So when you go to non-dairy milk, you're cutting out all that cholesterol, all the saturated fat, you know, and, and you're getting probably 50% more calcium, which to me is like, that's the reason you would drink milk, aside from it tasting good, is that you get calcium, and everyone needs everyone calcium, but you get 50% more in, in any of the, the, the soy milks. And there's soy milk, and flax milk, yeah. and oat milk, and almond milk, and sunflower milk, and... It's like that scene in Forrest Gump where they're like talking about the shrimp, but it's milk, and it's way, way better for animals. So, uh, Kathy, do you have an idea of a perfect meal? Is there such thing as a perfect meal? I love to eat, and I, I again, I love traditional foods, you know, so I, I, I love those junk foods, but um, I would say I, I love textures and different tastes, and I like to build the perfect bite, so I, I might say, you know, a burrito, a black bean burrito with um, lots of salsa, some sliced avocados, you know, a little cilantro, and, you know, um, and maybe a beer. And maybe a beer. Yes. I'm not on the maybe side of that beer. So when you were on our podcast, you talked about the fact that you didn't feel like you were a great cook, but you yeah. still create all of these delicious concoctions. And so can you talk about that? Do you have to be a great cook in order to lean in? No, I'm definitely not a great cook. Um, I, am, I eat super simply, you know, and um, I order out a lot. I take out a lot. Um, I eat leftovers. I'm on the road a lot, so I, I use my um, my apps on my iPad. That I think it's Veg Express and, and Vegan Express and and Happy Cow. It tells Veg Out is a good one. Veg Out is a good one exactly. That tells me where to go. Um, but there's a, a fantastic chef who wrote the recipes for my new book, and her name is Dana McLeod, and she's got an Australian meat loving husband and a four-year-old daughter, and I thought this is perfect because if she can make things, where well, she's a really busy gal, and if she can make things that will please her family, and they're super easy, then that, that's the kind of um, recipe that I want in the book. So she comes up with great stuff. These are things that you, as someone who, who doesn't feel like you're a great cook, can just easily whip together. I can actually do it. You can yeah. do it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Can we come over and just try out some of your recipes? Yeah. 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 Let's go. <laughs> so, let's talk about exercise. You brought up exercise. Where does exercise fit in with this? I know it's it's slightly off of what we're talking about in so far as, you know, not exercising doesn't have an impact on animals and exercising doesn't have an impact on animals. So, it's really about our own health. How, what's your favorite kind of exercise and, and how do you think people should incorporate it into their life? Or do, do they need to? Well, here's the thing. Um, in terms of your weight, diet is 80% of it. You know, so it's, it's, you can exercise all you want, but if you're not shifting the way you eat, it's not going to really make a huge change. Um, and I was a couch potato growing up, probably because of all the chicken fried steak I was eating, you know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I, I just think the best way with all things is to lean into it. So you literally open the back door and go, go for a walk around the block, you know. And the next day you pick up speed, and then the next day you add a little bit longer on, and you do it at a pace that's comfortable for you. And uh, exercise not only helps you lose weight, but it helps you um, get in a good mood. I think it's been tested to be more effective or equally as, as effective as the leading antidepressants. Wow. And keeping your mood good. So it's, and it's, and it's free. It is, indeed. <laughs>
Personally, I do a lot of hiking. I live in California most of the time, so I do a lot of hiking, and um, that's really good, you know, for me. I like being out in fresh air. I get a lot of, you know, clarity when I'm out there, and then I usually come home and I do some push-ups and some sit-ups and things like that. I try to do yoga every once in a while, but I'm kind of lame, you know. Um, I'm leaning into it. Leaning into yoga. That'll be our next book, Leaning Into Yoga by Kathy Jackson. <laughs> well, I think that that's... I think that's so important to not, maybe to not overthink it, but to just start. Because sometimes we get so caught up in overthinking what we need to eat and what we need to do and things like that. And you're right, it really can create more purpose in our life. And purpose is something that you talk about. I've been getting your daily emails for the lean. And you talk about the importance of each of us finding our own purpose. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yeah, purpose, you know, I, I talk about it in terms of weight loss, but I've also talked about it in quantum wellness. Um, I think that we are here on this earth for a great reason, and each of us has our own particular um, reason, our own particular purpose, and I think it's the thing that fires us up and fuels us, and it is the, the thing that makes us feel most alive. And we don't always know what it is. I think it sometimes chooses us, you know, and it chooses us by um, something that just gets under our skin and makes us crazy. Like for me, I just get insane seeing what happens to animals and it just makes me, you know, work harder and, and, and get smarter on this stuff. Um, for other people, it's um, poverty in America. For other people, it is a spiritual purpose. Um, but whatever it is, when you find your purpose and you start plugging into it, it takes your your mind, your energy out of the, the self-centered fear, you know? And it plugs you into something that's greater than yourself. And when you do that, you're not thinking about the cupcake. You're not obsessing about food. You're just, you know, you're so alive. You're so plugged into this greater source that it just pushes you forward. And I think that's really important, not only for you know keeping our weight down or losing weight, but also to be happy, to have a sense of, you know, this is what my life is all about. It's a very holistic way of looking at it, obviously. It's just saying that there's a lot of synergy created by the way we eat and the way we interact with the world and the way the world interacts with us. But let's talk about money. <laughs> Because you mentioned exercise is free, and I know a lot of people have this idea that it's expensive to eat plant-based foods, and I have been vegan for many, many years, and I am poor, and I can manage it. So can you just speak about, you know, how people can incorporate a plant-based diet into their lives and keep their finances in order? Yeah, well, the, the cheapest things you can eat are whole grains and beans. I mean, it's super cheap. You can go and get them in the bin uh, for literally pennies a meal. You know, it's really inexpensive. And I, I also enjoy getting frozen vegetables and frozen uh, fruits because when the veggies are frozen, you, they're flash frozen, so you're getting all the nutrients and you're not missing anything. Um, there's a guy named Matt who is featured in my book. He tells his story of losing 100 pounds, and he travels a lot, and so he is cooking a lot um, in his, in his you know, homes, and sometimes it's a hotel, and sometimes it's a, a trailer, and sometimes it's you know, somebody's house, and he just goes to the market and he gets you know, his rice, or quinoa or oats and he gets a bunch of different kinds of beans and lentils and he gets some frozen vegetables. He picks up a few sauces that he likes, a hot sauce, uh, you know, a mustard sauce or whatever and some tortillas and every day he creates something different. He throws different things into the pan. It's super cheap. It's super fast. It doesn't even require a recipe. I mean a lot of people are very um, how shall we say, it, uh, adept in the, in the culinary arts. Um, I'm not, but, but, and he talks about how it's so expensive, and as he slimmed down, you know, 100 pounds, and his wife, by the way, lost 200 pounds, um, they were spending virtually nothing, you know, on their food. And, you know, the amount of money that you save by not being sick cannot be understated here. You know, when you're sick, you're, you're losing out on your work days. 
Uh, you don't have that pizzazz, so you're not working at full function anyway. And by the way, those major diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease and cancer are super expensive. They're time consuming. Obviously, they're horrible to go through, but they're really expensive, no matter how great your insurance might be. You know, there's still the co-pays. So you actually save a lot of money short term if you're avoiding the convenience foods, uh, like the you know veggie sausage and veggie chicken and things like that, and you're eating, which happens to be healthier if you're just eating right. simple foods, and you're saving money <coughs> long term. Well, I just lost 90 pounds. I was going to say that. Oh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It was from really focusing on a whole foods based diet, yeah. and and I've taken up running, and I so I, I love everything you're saying. It resonates very deeply with me. Um, so you mentioned you're from Atlanta and that you grew up on meat and potatoes. I've actually been to Atlanta recently and have had some very good vegan food there. Have you been back? And I haven't been back in a few years. I, I went back uh, recently a few months ago, but it was only for a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Was it the, the vegan soul food restaurant, right? That, that's the one in Atlanta. Oh my God, it's amazing. But you are on the road a lot. So what kinds of discoveries are you making about the plant-based options that you're finding? You said you had a great meal yesterday in Boston or Cambridge, and, yeah. and you've got to be in small towns too. How is that as, as a person who travels? Yeah, it's actually getting a whole lot easier. I mean, anyone who's in this room, I consider you a pioneer. You know, you're an early adopter. We're all early adopters, and I'm kind of proud of that, and I hope you are too. Um, but there are challenges that go along with it. It's not, it's not, I, I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's easy, it's no problem. I don't want to lie, it's not always been easy. Um, there are days when I'm traveling and I'm eating, you know, a protein bar, and, you know, an apple that I brought from home, or a banana, or some trail mix, you know, and I wish I could go have a hearty food. But I do see things changing, I really do, because the market is catching up with the culture. And I think the culture has been moving forward at a much uh, heartier pace than business. You know, and I think that's probably because because business old, owners happen to be a little older and a little slower to catch the wave. You know, the younger generation is seeing that this way this is where they want to go. They they've seen the undercover videos. They don't like what they're seeing in factory farms. Uh, they're seeing um, the cancer and heart disease and all that stuff, and they're seeing their family members suffer. They don't want that. It's like smoking, you know? Smoking we really thought was fine for, I mean, up until really even a couple of decades ago. I mean, there were people defending smoking um, on Capitol Hill, saying it's there's no proof that it actually does anything harmful to you. So. So it's, it's, it's the same. We're up against um, some very large business interests that say it's okay to eat meat and dairy and doesn't do anything wrong. And so a lot of the businesses, you know, haven't caught up to that. But as I travel, I see these fantastic places popping up, you know, that do... Last, last night I went to a, a vegetarian diner and I had a Reuben sandwich and, and a Boston cream pie. and. I was in heaven, you know, and I looked around and everyone was young and that was the galaxy, the galaxy, galaxy, yeah, that's delicious. Seriously good, yeah. But but meanwhile, I would say, you know, if you're already into this, keep speaking up. You know, every time I get on a plane, I ask the flight attendant, "Oh, do you have any soy milk or almond milk?" And they say no, and I know they don't have it. But just well, I just want to keep saying it so that business owners know we're here. You know, the moment has arrived and you need to catch up with us because it ain't, it ain't turning around, right. you know. We're smarter than that. It's not going backwards, so you might want to, you know, catch up with it. So I actually, my favorite restaurant um, is up in Santa Barbara and it's a steakhouse. And a lot of people are horrified that I would, you know, go to a steakhouse. Frankly, I want to go to the places that are very, you know, that are, haven't thought about it before and say, you know, have a tofu dish because I'll come and I'll spend money and I'll have a martini, you know, and I'll, and I'll bring people. And, and so this, this uh, steakhouse called Lucky's up in Santa Barbara, they now have a great tofu dish. Wow. So yeah, fantastic. and they fly out the door. The guy, the manager, is kind of amazed, you know, because even, if, like in my family, not everybody is vegetarian, hardly, and not vegan, so... I want to go someplace where they can have what they want, 
and I can have what I want. So the restaurants that don't have something for everyone are going to miss out. So I think it's good that we keep asking about it. I love that activist mentality of just really feeling like we can be empowered. We can actually not only vote with our dollars, but show people that we're out here and we need this, we want this food, we want our tofu. We really do. So. I totally noticed that things are changing. I mean, look downstairs and upstairs, the yeah. amount of vendors here, the amount of people in this room at this at this veg fest, it's, it's, it's truly remarkable. So if there's people in here right now who are starting to think, you know what, I'm, I have to start making these strides in my life. I have to start. And they go home and they look in their refrigerator and they look in their cabinets and they already know they have to dish the milk, right? So. What other things can people do today, tonight, over the weekend, in the coming week, to start to change their refrigerator and their cabinets around? Here's the thing that I would do, is I would go home and think about everything you have to eat for the week. Because most of us have seven, maybe ten rotations of meals we have for dinner, you know, and again, unless you're a real cook, a real chef. Um, so it's, you know, spaghetti and meatballs one night, it's Mexican food another night, it's chicken and mashed potatoes another night. So I would write down those things, and then I would choose one of them, and make a swap. So say it is um, a sausage and sauerkraut one night. I believe it. I mean, that was something I, I love. So I found some veggie sausage, and I, you know, have the sauerkraut as usual, and that was an easy switch. So, so from now I'm organized. Now I know that when that night comes up, I'm ready. So then I get used to that. My family gets used to it. They like it. Maybe a few weeks later, I have Mexican night. You know, because we always have Mexican night one night a week. So instead of having uh, the beef tacos. We have the meatless meat crumbles, you know, in the tacos, or black beans, you know, black bean burritos or whatever. And there's great uh, non-dairy sour cream and non-dairy cheese. I love Daya. It's really good. It's made from tapioca. Um, so, so, okay, now I'm covered for two nights, you know. And so when you write it down, it's not that overwhelming. Because the overwhelming thing is like, oh my god, I've got to change everything. You don't have to change everything. Mike? It's all about leaning into it. It's all about getting your feet Your wet. mic is off. It's what? Your mic is off. Oh, is it? It's the battery that's low. Use mine. I'm so sorry. Can you guys hear me? Just in. Just in. Just in. Less than a minute. Okay. Okay. So it's all about leaning into it. Oh, I have volume now. Sorry about that. Um, so, so it's all about just finding the things that you love and then making the swap and taking the pressure off of yourself. You know, don't don't think you have to do all all this stuff at once. And and be kind to your family and be kind to the people around you. Because I have to say, if if someone had approached me in the beginning of considering this stuff and was really dogmatic about, you know, you shouldn't be eating this, do you know what happens to cows, and you shouldn't be doing that, I'd be like, you know what, I don't like you, and I'm going to reject your message. So, we, it, you know, if you're already into it, consider that we're, we're the ambassadors of this lifestyle, you know? And if you're not into it, I would say give yourself some space, give yourself a break to find your way, because we grew up loving this sad food, you know, the standard American diet. And food is so deeply ingrained in us, it takes a minute to make the change. And you gotta give yourself the space and time to figure it out. So it's about approaching things with compassion and approaching people with compassion, but also approaching yourself with compassion and not necessarily going home and like throwing everything out, but starting to lean into it, starting to transition it out of your fridge and your cabinet and whatnot. So I do want to take a few questions. Is that okay with you? So we're going to take a few questions and then at three o'clock, Kathy's going to be signing books. But I know a lot of you have questions. I see a lot of pens writing, things like that. I just ask that you stand up and speak really loud when you ask a question. So who has a question? Yes, with the glasses on your head, stand up. OK, so my family is vegetarian. I have two children. And my biggest issue, we, my husband and I are both 
go, all go for going vegan. And we have two young children, uh, almost three and almost five. And it's the, there is a huge pushback from, not from my family, but from a, a lot of my friends, yeah. from the pediatrician, just kind of, what, you know, yeah. we're, like, that we're doing something bad by changing yeah. our children from vegetarian to vegan. And my yeah. kids are fine. We've tried it, and they've been fine with it. But how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> so Okay, the question is, what do I do when my kids, you know, we're vegetarian and we're feeding our kids veg, and it's really hard because we get a lot of pushback, not only from friends, but also from the pediatrician. And isn't, it a, isn't it so annoying that people want to tell you how to raise your kids? It's just like, uh, it's amazing to me. It's, it's like, I don't want someone to tell me what I should eat, and I, I wouldn't want someone to tell me how to raise my kids. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a doctor that I, I brought my mom to because she had an issue with her knee recently. And um, this doctor I had met before and I, I was just so, you know, usually I'm all about flexibility and being nice. And that, but when I see doctors saying things like you need to eat your red meat, I just, I guess so, uh, you know. So I was a little cranky with him one night. And then when I brought my mom, because I had met him at a function, and then I brought my mom in, and and, um, and I was like, oh no, it's the doctor that I yelled at. <laughs> so I, I didn't yell at him, but I was cranky. And uh, he said, you know, I've been thinking about you a lot. And I was like, oh God, please don't take it out on my mother. And uh, he said, you know, I didn't like it at all, but I looked into it, and you're actually right about this stuff. And I thank you, it was bitter medicine, but I'm a better doctor because of it. And so I would say if your doctor is not on board, number one, you could find another doctor who is. Um, in, in, in the front of my book, both two books, I give um, a website that you can look into to find a doctor who's more holistic in nature. Um, but to also get the studies, and you can certainly visit my website, you can visit um, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, it's pcrm.com, and uh, they can give you the studies that you can bring into your doctor. You can also quote the American Dietetic Association, which is as mainstream as you can possibly get. They've just renamed themselves, I forgot what it is, but it's basically the ADA, the American Dietetic Association says that a vegan or vegetarian diet is not only okay for any stage of life, including lactating mother, infant, old person, teenager, whatever, but it actually looks like it might be better. Duh. Um, so, so you've got the American Dietetic Association. You can bring the quote into your doctor or email it to him. And you can get any studies for whatever he says. You can get the studies from PCRM and bring it into him to show him. And you know what? As a service, you might want to bring them a book. You know, whether it's Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, or whatever, because doctors are beginning, especially cardiologists, are beginning to get this stuff, and, and oncologists. But the regular doctors are slower to uh, get it. And then, as far as your friends, you just say, I hear you, I hear, you know, again, I wouldn't I'd try to not be too angry, just say, I hear you, but my kids apparently, you know, they're doing really well. Their, their, their tests are soaring, you know. Vegetarian kids, on average, are an inch taller than kids who are not vegetarian. Wow. So they, they, they have great growth rates, they're smart, you know, <coughs> IQs tend to be a little higher, actually. Um, so, and as far as getting other kids into it, you make food that the, the kids like, you know, whether it's a, you know, a taco with some non-dairy cheese or some pizza, you know, yeah, pizza's not ideal for kids, but that's what they eat, you know, so make a pizza with non-dairy cheese, some veggie sausage or veggie pepperoni or some mushrooms or whatever, and they'll like it. Um, I think another great way to get veggies into kids is by making a smoothie. You can do uh, some coconut water, add some... Uh, protein powder or not, and add some blueberries, and then da -da -da, a few florets of frozen broccoli. And you put the broccoli in there, you blend it up, and because of the blueberries, it's purple. They don't even know they're having broccoli! So you're getting it in there, you know. And, and the healthier your kids are, they're going to set examples, and, and the neighbors are going to say, oh, well, they look pretty darn good to me. But again, you're a pioneer. So, you know, you're an early adopter, and that's what people who are out in the front 
deal with people who are doubters, you know, and you just want to just deal with it with grace and kindness and setting a good example and being healthy, and your kids will be healthy, and that will catch on. That's, that's a really good question. I think that's a question that resonates with a lot of people. And there are resources available for every single thing that your doctor will say or your friends will say. There's always something that we can find the answer to these questions. Okay, is there another question? Yes, over there. Stand up and really loudly. Hi. Um, I'm really confused about the soy. Because we, I love tofu, but I'm going to be honest, I'm over 50 and I've heard bad things about soy and it causing, you know, breast cancer. Also, soy for women as opposed to men, um, how bad it is. But everything that you want to buy that if you want to kind of like go off instead of eating vegetables and fruit, if you want to get like the, you know, the non-dairy cheese, yeah. um, it's made with soy. Yeah, this is and such a great question. Yeah, yeah, this is about soy, and there's so much information or misinformation out there about soy. And um, before I get into it, I have to ask the question, what would be the ideal food to replace meat and dairy? Soy. So who has a vested interest in you know, getting some bad information out there? could be some companies associated with meat and dairy. I don't know, I'm just saying. But again, I would turn to the studies, and the studies, the science, the peer-reviewed science, that again, I can send to you if you go to my website, and PCRM also has it among others. The peer-reviewed research shows that soy is actually very good for you. Not only is it high in protein and, and all that great stuff, but it, for women who um, have had breast cancer and they eat soy opposed to, as opposed to those who don't, actually have a much lower rate of recurrence and mortality. And there is no evidence to show that boys grow boobs. Um, it's very helpful in prostate cancer. Um, you might want to avoid the, the, the GMO soy, you know. But again, if you're worried about soy and you think I'm not going to eat soy, then you should know that I believe it is, I believe it's 90% of the soy produced um, goes to livestock. So you're getting the soy if you're eating meat and dairy anyway, because it's going into the flesh and the milk. Um, but otherwise, I would say really don't worry about it. That said, if you disagree with me and you just have a feeling in your stomach and you don't want it, there's no reason you have to eat soy. I mean, there's, you don't need it, absolutely not. You don't need it. Again, you can stick to the very whole foods like lentils, black beans, chickpeas, um, you know, all of that stuff. But I would encourage you to really look deeply at the soy stuff. It's really quite good. And if you look at um, Asian countries for thousands of years have basically lived on rice and soy, tofu, tofu and They've had zero or close to zero cancer and heart disease and obesity and things like that. And uh, there hasn't been an issue. So it's exponentially better than the standard American diet. But you don't have to eat it, you know. But I know it's in a lot of those convenience foods and I happen to love it. I eat it every day, you know, often, and I love it. But you might want to look for the non-GMO. That would be a smart thing to do. That was another great question. A lot of people have that question. We have time for one more question. Is there someone who... Okay. Well, just to, piggy, just to piggyback off that question, which I love that you asked that, and I've been reading a lot about it because I'm also in your age group. Um, so I'm reading that the soy that you eat as whole, like to get the ed ed amount of, you know, to eat the whole bean, versus the isolate. And I did go in my freezer and threw out all the stuff that helped me transition. So hate to pound on the question, but to dig <coughs> even deeper, what's the whole thing about the isolate? <laughs> okay, so so it's definitely better to eat whole foods without question. And and the isolate is where it's concentrated and it's it's you know, anything processed is not gonna be great for you. But again, it's a lot better than the standard American diet. So as much as you can, have edamame, you know, and that's, that's the whole food soy, so that's better. But if you're, you know, if you're in a pinch and all they have is soy milk, 
you know, and you want something in your tea or coffee, whatever, go for it. I mean, I have, I have soy all the time. I, I'm not really worried about it. But again, I'm all about progress, not perfection. So I know a lot of people in this community are seriously hardcore healthy, and that's great. And so then I would say, don't go for processed food. Just stick with the, the, the edamame, the whole soy. I, I say that you're leaning and it's great and it's okay. Give yourself some space. And you know, by the way, there's almond milk and oat milk and sunflower milk and you know, rice milk and all that stuff. So there's there's lots of different options. And I don't eat I don't eat the, the soy based chicken often. I have it maybe once every ten days, you know, so so it's fine. It's fine. It's really, you know, a spectrum. It is, it's a spectrum. And Kathy Preston is a spectrum of fabulous. <laughs> and the book is called The Lady, the new book. All of Kathy's books are available for sale here. And Kathy's going to go sign them now. Don't, don't uh, hover around her on the way out because she has to get to the table. But again, the new book is called The Lean. And I can't thank you enough. You're just such a brilliant force.